We called in a home inspector, and he gave us basically a clean bill of health. He put nothing in the report about the garage? Nothing. That's a no-no, and he should have put that in the report. The whole room. The whole room is freezing. Oh, my goodness. Wait till I open that up. It's just been too many things, and the surprise was really how unthorough the inspection was. Stuart and Kim bought the home from the original owner, kind of like that. They bought it big enough for them and their two dogs with an unfinished basement so they could see what the house is built like, where the wires run, where the pipes run. Smart. Home inspector found a couple of little things. The homeowners did the right things. They actually started to fix the things that he put in paper. However, things started to go wrong. Things just weren't quite right. What did Stuart and Kim really learn from their home inspector? Well, I'm here to do a homes inspection. I'm gonna ask questions, get answers, so I can find solutions to help Stuart and Kim make it right. When we first decided where we wanted to live, um, we spent about 18 months scouring the area because our criterion was fairly specific. A lot of homes, Lots. a lot of open houses, a lot of showings, and a lot of the new houses they build now don't give you much of a yard. We wanted something that's a little bit more open. We were looking at a home that was in well enough maintained shape that we wouldn't have to do any serious renovations when we came in, but that still had the potential that we wanted in terms of beautifying it aesthetically. So when we found this home, we were really excited. We thought we had found our dream home. We called in a home inspector, and he gave us basically a clean bill of health on the house. Nothing's wrong with it, just minor maintenance. Recommended having the furnace and air conditioner replaced, which we did. He also recommended re-insulating the roof, and uh, so we did. It was only when we started having issues that we went back through the report to see if those were captured, and then the, the surprise was really how unthorough the, the inspection was. Wipe your paws. Kim. Hi. I'm Mike. Nice Hi, Mike. to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Must be you. Stu. Come yes. on out. How you doing, Mike? We have a beautiful day in the neighborhood. With a home inspector, you're sort of counting on him or her to give you the highlights of, of his or her findings up front as opposed to having to scan the documents. So the really big things that we were looking for, that we were up front about, we expected him to mention, and we were assured that everything was fine. All right. If it didn't look bad, he's not going to see anything. Why do we have a mesh on the gable? Squirrels. Squirrels. Did you put the mesh up? We did. Yes, we did. The trouble started. We're upstairs and we hear scratching in the walls. We're saying, well, what the heck is this scratching in the walls? And we realized it was squirrels getting into our house. We were outside one time and we were watching them actually go in and out of the roof line. Wasn't too impressed with that. The inspector doesn't notice looking at the vent that there's a hole in there. You can get rodents getting in there. Do you have leaks in the bathroom? This is your bathroom up here. There, there is moisture around the side of it. Around the skylights? Around the skylights. OK. And did you talk to the inspector about this? Didn't see it there at the time. Yeah. OK. And he didn't say anything? Nothing. He put nothing in the report about the garage? Nothing. OK. Look around the door. See the gaps? Yeah. yeah. OK, that's the first thing that caught my eye. And then I look down. What do I see when I look down? It's exposed. It's all exposed. The problem is the wall is not sealed to the foundation. It's not sealed to the door. And what do you put in here? Cars. Cars, right. What comes off the cars? Oh, Exhaust. And what comes into the house? Carbon monoxide. That's right. How could he miss this? So that's a no-no. And he should have put that in the report. Stuart has a, a snowmobile that he often runs the engine just to make sure that it's tuned up, and he runs it in the garage. We never gave any thought to that, but now with the fumes entering the home, that's a huge issue. That's a very serious miss. Look how neat this is. Look how proper this is. And we have the ESA stecker, so I love that. So they came in and checked it all. We had to change the electrical panel as well because it was actually, there were too many circuits loaded on the original panel. And that was something that the home inspector did not tell us, that we actually had an overloaded panel that needed to be changed. I would imagine a home inspector should be trained to, uh, to determine that.
This one here is the shower with the water hammer. Here's why pipes bang. Not enough clamps on the pipe holding it, right? It's because right. if you can shake the pipe and it goes yeah. <laughs> Imagine when you have pressure on the pipe, turning it on and off, pressure, boom, it yeah. bangs. You really need to anchor all your pipes nicely secured so they don't bang. So this is pretty well original. Not too often I see carpet in the bathroom. So something tells me you saw potential in the house. Exactly. Yes. And you're going to upgrade it in time to come. That was exactly the plan. Uh, we do have the electrical rod, and so someone was cold at one point. You did not do it. No. No. One of their biggest issues is in the wintertime, it gets really cold around the suite bathroom. Really, really cold. Even though there's a repeat register up there and an electric baseboard heater up there. So we're freezing cold. Did you feel the walls? Did you check things out? Is the floor cold? The whole room. The whole room is freezing. Like, put it this way. In the wintertime, we, just for us to stay warm in our bedroom, exactly. we got to keep this door closed. Such a deep window well. Why is that so deep? Ooh, I'm going to be looking into that. That wall's right at the window on the outside. You see yeah. how deep this is? Yeah. What's in this wall? Nothing, but it's cold. No idea. It's <laughs> really cold. I can tell you that. I'm going to go through the whole house. I'm going to find what I can find. I'm going to start obviously opening things up. I can, funny feeling about your bathroom here. It just may be opened up a lot. But don't worry, I'm going to make it right. Thank That's you. what I do. Thank you very much, Mike. OK. This is scary. You know, what did this other guy miss? Mike's already found far more areas than we expected. So I think we're both a little concerned about what other things he's going to find. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit scary. This is what we call raking. Because this is a straight rake right through the brick, all it does is creates a reveal against the two pieces of brick. It looks attractive. It's actually quite nice. If the whole house is like this and we have snow and rain, it allows to penetrate on the top of that brick. So this is where we break the brick because water gets in, freezes, and pushes the face of the brick. So if it's raked back, it's a problem. Minor, but it's a problem. Pay now or pay later. Anytime I see a front fascia like this, just the wood and the stucco, I know there's going to be a few problems. What are the problems? Well, not so much the stucco. Because it's painted, it's going to resist water or moisture. The problem that I see is the wood itself. We are here in a snow belt. It's beautiful in summer, but in the winter, we have a lot of snow. So picture it sitting on the roof line and up against that wood. It's just a sponge absorbing moisture. That's why that one's the worst piece. When I was on the inside, what I was looking at was that void, that window well. So we have the, we have the front fascia here where the window is. As we continue to go in, that void was probably open up in an area of, I'd say, 32 inches deep. So that whole void means it's an open area, much like an attic space, OK? But it's on its own. Is it breathing? Is there creatures in there? Is there problems? It's freezing cold in the bathroom. We have an issue. I see the homeowner put the mesh up on the end gable for the venting, which is great. But you know, is it the entrance where all the creatures are getting in is the question. If I stand back and take a look at it, I don't think it is. I don't think it's big enough. I think they're coming from somewhere else. But I'll find out. Now, you got to love this. I don't know who built the fence. Pets escape. Please close gate, right? I don't know who built it. it wasn't me. Little things like this that drive me insane. This window should have been further out. We want to make this corner exceed to this point because this flashing now is the top of the foundation wall. Think of snow, think of driving rain once again. As long as it's cocked, it's fine. It's when it's not cocked, like this side. That cocking is cracked. Oh, that is sloppy. Once again, we need to think it's a cold zone in the winter with snow. How low is this? to the snow. That is wood. That is plywood. Ants, critters, bugs, mice, water, moisture, snow, etc. Is it good? No. I saw nothing in the report about the east drops or downspouts. What I did see was kick them out from away from the foundation. The homeowners did do that. Good. Obviously, these drops are old. They have an improper slope. The water's never going to make it to the downspouts. Really, it's just going to spill over the edge of the east drop. So seeing 
Right here, we've had moisture issues. Not to mention, there was a switch here, and the homeowners didn't know what had, what had turned on. When the builder built the house, there was a light right here. Hard to see, but it's there. That's an octagon box that is right there. There was obviously another chandelier option in this area. So the homeowner, the original homeowner, said to the builder, we don't want that there. Can you take it out? So all they did was plaster right over the box, and I left the wires inside. I'm going to have to find out if they're live. This is uh, definitely signs of moisture. When I was walking through with them, I started to notice the mold. And if we follow it, this is minor surface mold that we see across there, across the next one in the same area. Nothing on the bottom, but we can continue. Minor surface mold again. I think that they've had some floods here. I think that they've tried everything they could, the previous owners, to solve the problem of water coming in. I mean, you have that much moisture, it's gonna create surface mold. I love it that the homeowners thought ahead. We want a house that is unfinished basement. I mean, that's great thinking because when it's not finished in the basement, you get to see everything. They paid attention. When we put up studded walls and drywall, we call that enclosure, right? So now all we see is paint. We don't know if there's cracks in the foundation, leaks, until we start smelling something or the carpet's wet. So from the homeowner, I'm just gonna take some shots and create a documented package based on what I see, and then an information package will be on what they have to do to fix it, as well as what I have to fix. And it's great to see that the homeowners went on their own, they bought the right tape and taped the joints. The furnace guys didn't do that because you know why they didn't do that? Because they don't have to do that, right? Only the good guys do that. Only the good guys that have integrity come in and do the duck mud or the tape. Only the good guys do that. Good guys think it's their home. This is one of those mind over matter theories. It's not mine, so it doesn't matter. I think the next thing I'm going to do is put on my overalls and break some holes. Because I got a funny feeling when I get into that bathroom, I'm gonna see a whole lot of things done wrong. And more than likely, a whole lot of wonderful creatures that just may surprise me. When we started experiencing the electrical problems, cold drafts in the bedrooms, and rodents in the roof, in hindsight, would we have bought this house? No. Probably not. not. Nice hot day. Beautiful day. Good morning. 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 We're going to be pulling down drywall in the garage, the upper area, because I need to see how the critters are getting in and see if we can find anything else up there. So let's get our tools, get going. So we'll just start by opening this up. I think that's the first time I've seen you use a hammer to punch a hole in the wall. <laughs> All right. There you go. Hmm, interesting. What do you see up there? Well, I see a bunch of raccoon poop. Oh, do you? Yeah, they've made a bathroom here. Before I go further, I just want to confirm there's nothing going to jump out at me and scare the hell out of me, knock me off the ladder. Ooh, we definitely have animals living in here. Right now, there's nothing in here, so I'm kind of happy about that. They've taken the paper down in the back of the uh, insulation here, and they've actually used it as a bathroom. Wow. I tell you, the off-gassing from the vehicles, no problem getting in the house. Well, all they've done was drywalled, like, the truss. They've just drywalled the back of this truss. That's why it's so flimsy here, because it's like drywalling the back of this. Why didn't they go directly to the house? I don't know. This is really strange. <sighs> well, this is going to be easy. We'll pull this all down, and then we'll move ourselves in the house. This is like a raccoon highway in here. Not for long, boys. We're coming for you. Whoa, is it hot. Wow, we have plenty of insulation. No signs of mold, very good. I got venting. Well, right now, there's no critters up there. There's no real evidence that they're going through the attic, as you would see the paths of them going you know, up and down like the kids playing in snow. 
Good sign up there, I have to say. It's a good sign. I'm feeling a little better. Maybe it is the front that they're coming in. Okay. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to peel it up around the corners here, guys, but we're going to have to cut this into sections. I don't want to carry this around. It's the most moisture in your whole house will be right in your bathroom. Moisture and carpet don't like each other. They will start to mold. Also, you do not want carpet around your toilet for obvious reasons. You actually put the toilet on top of the carpet. You've got to be kidding me. Yvonne, are you wearing gloves at least? Half gloves. <laughs> You're a brave soul, my friend. We're going to rip this out. We are going to give them some tile in here. It help with the smell, help with the bacteria. I'm seeing signs on the inside of moisture, and I think the weeping is blocked on this side. The way to get in, I see, is the window well. There's a vertical weeper. Mm -hmm. If you can get your snake and camera down there and just take a look to see what we see, maybe yep. you can find another route, and then let me know what you find. No problem. I'm getting a whole lot of moisture down here. On the floor joists here and across here, we're seeing surface mold. So it's one of a couple things, possibly from the water coming through the floor due to a possible blockage in the weepers, and too much moisture in here. Maybe from the humidifier, but please look. All right. Just in case it's uh, possibly the HVAC. No problem. Thanks, pal. Humidifier being located on one side of the plenum, you're basically putting more humidity on one side of the house. This should be central. Bringing it around and tying it in so that way you're, you're putting the humidity into the plenum and separating it evenly. We got some wiring that's coming in through the uh, return joist lining. There's a lot of play in this floor. You can have it chafing the wires, cutting it open. You're gonna liven up the whole ductwork. So I'll change that out, change those pans out. We'll put some thermal pan in. Um, it's basically a product that's made out of cardboard with an aluminum sheathing on top. We can go right over the electrical wiring. It'll never liven it up. Being a cold area, a lot of heat leaking into this basement could be, again, a moisture problem or what could be creating one of the problems in here. Um, so we'll seal all the ductwork up, make sure there's nothing leaking down here. Well, you're just right in there, aren't you? Ugh. Well, Ugh. it's full of stone, isn't it's it? It's full of stone, and uh, it's this wet. is where I'm getting. It's wet. And it's actually, it should be a three quarter inch clear stone. So this won't allow me to put my camera in uh, and actually investigate what the condition of this weeping tile is. Problem being is now I can't get to the weepers. Do I got to dig a hole? Are you guys done yet? Well, I got another three to seven feet. You have half an hour. <laughs> I'm using a jackhammer on the, uh, we'll call it dirt, but it's actually clay, uh, because clay is extremely hard. It's very dense. And uh, let's just say, if I was using this with a pick, I'd have one sore back, and I'd probably be sleeping over there by the end of the day. <laughs> so this just makes my life a little bit easier. Well, now that all this drywall is down, by looking at this, I'm starting to think that the homeowner called the builder after they moved in and said, our bathroom is freezing cold. And I think the builder put in the heater. I think the builder actually uh, added a secondary row of drywall over top of this, so more insulation, another piece of drywall uh, they prepared on yeah, the wrong side. And I'm upstairs, because I just looked in the attic, which yep. looks fine, by the way. And I come down, I look back in the bathroom, and I see the exhaust fan. Mm -hmm. And I realize the exhaust fan is on the corner of the bathroom, which means my bathroom's more over here, which leads oh, me to here. Yeah. So check this out. Hold this ladder for me. Yep. And I'm right. What do you got? I have a massive void here. An absolute massive void. And here's what we're going to do next. Yep. Because I'm going in there. Pull down all this drywall, pull out all the insulation of this whole section, and just uh, do me a favor. After that, cut that access open, because I'm going in. I'm going to tell you why that room is freezing. This area needs to be vented right. from the roof. Yep. That side needs to be vented from the roof because there's no air escape. 
Oh, Mike, you're gonna love this, buddy. I can see into the bathroom around this fan. Now, once this is all down and I get down that side, I'm gonna show you why it's so cold in that room, how it's coming up through, how the critters are getting through, and wait till you see that side. I'll believe you. Okay, keep going. Right. I'm excited. Just in case she falls, I'll catch her. Or pass that to me. Okay, thank you. So, Sherry, since you're here with me, let's take a look here. Okay. So we see that that's the bathroom right from that edge right across to this edge here, right? Yeah. We can see the exhaust fan is wrong. It shouldn't be in the wall. It should be in the ceiling. The du it's ducted wrong. It's a three-inch line. Let's change our ladders so we can get up there. Okay. If you want, you can come in with me. You're gonna love this. You can come see it, and I'll explain why it's cold. Come on in. This is the bathroom, right here. So the question is, why is it so cold in the bathroom in the winter? Remember, this little attic space is freezing cold in the winter, freezing in here. Look, at we got gaps here, right? Yeah, so it's That's not the inside wall. That's the, right there, you see that? There's the inside wall right there. What's that? That's the floor. So none That's of that's the protected. They stopped cold. the insulation from here. It didn't protect the floor. This is just poorly done. Like, this is not going to work. Obviously, for 20-something years, this bathroom's been freezing. Not insulated enough, too many, too much home for a critter to get in, evidence that they've climbed the wall and now gone up. And that newspaper up there's got me a little curious. <laughs> you can tell what year it is. 2008. 2008. So maybe the critters brought it up. <laughs> That'd be kind of cute. Yeah, you said as a buffer. Who knows? It's, it's their insulation. <sighs> so that's the window well. Do you see any insulation at all in the bottom? No, there's nothing in here. That's such a cold zone. It's just going to keep driving the cold in. I think I'm going to strip everything from the outside and spray it. And all we have to do is spray all this all the way down and cover it, hit the bottom all the way through, spray all this wall. And we're going to have to drop the ceiling in the bathroom so we can spray the ceiling. And we're going to redo this. And I guarantee you, by the time we're done, that will be the warmest room in the house. You think they at least tried, though? I think they tried, but I think they failed. Yvonne, start taking off the wood down that side. I'm going to start on this side, and then we'll just go right into the plaster, OK, buddy? Heads up down there. And don't be gentle. <laughs> it's a beautiful day to rip off the front face of a house. We have a lot of rot going on here. That's number one reason why we're losing this today. Number two reason is we have almost a three-foot void wrapping around that bathroom that we have to get to with spray foam. Best way to do that is get rid of this. Hiya! Huzzah! Oh, yeah. And we have wasps to contend with. I mean, I hate killing them, but it's never me at this point. Oh, there's the nest. Wow. Well, they were right about the little pitter-patter of little feet. There's a good nest. Oh, and we have a dead bird, so we know they're definitely up there. And that shows you how good this screening actually is. I mean, they ate right through that. That's how they got in the house, is right through that hole. Now, I'm going to assume that this hole is for the venting that the builders would have done. But these holes here is all from animals chewing right through. You can see right through here. They started through here, started through here. They've actually found their way in behind the screen up into here and just made that a really nice, warm home every winter. I mean, I would have done the same thing. This is survival. Well, here's one thing I would have tried to do. If you're going to build out the window three feet, you at least want to make sure that this thing is insulated. And as you can see, <laughs> that is not proper insulation here. Uh, no wonder they were cold. So what I've done is I run a video camera from this point around the corner to the front of the house. Uh, the weeping tile is clear. All I have is just a small uh, sort of a muddy buildup at the bottom of it, which is natural, typical. 
uh, as the soil uh, penetrates the weeping tile through the holes. But I don't have any tree roots, I don't have any blockages, so the weeping tile problem is out of the question. Everything seems to be working fine. Now, I want to eliminate any possible moisture issues within this basement. The good news is that the weepers around the whole house are clear. The bad news is that the troughs are all clogged around the whole house. And they've been improperly installed, and we have to redo them. Whoever installed it didn't slope it right. Fills up with water, gunk. If you look across there, you can see the dirt line. How it was just perfectly level all the way across. So what we're going to have Steve do is kick out the downspouts two feet off of the foundation, solving any more moisture issues against that foundation wall. Nah, no animals in here. No, just be nice. Oh, my god, we have a tree. Why? <laughs> yeah, and you can see they've eaten right through this. So we definitely have an infestation. And you can see they've eaten right through that insulation. Assuming that they're in there in the winter, they were within the void trying to get to the warm side. That's why they come to this surface right here. They get right in. They didn't do the insulation very well, and that's why they had to rebuild on the outside. You add rodents to the mix that are tearing apart your insulation, and this is gonna be one cold room. Oh, and there is a dead squirrel here. We're gonna make sure they don't come back. Seeing this, I'm gonna take down a little bit more insulation and might as well get Joey to start looking at the electrical because we might have an issue. Forensic evidence. This is sample A. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> I just checked out over all the wiring. Made a bit of a mess. The wiring's all fine. Damon, I think we'll be happy. Damon's gonna take down the shower. And it's kind of dark in the shower, so he asked if we can put a shower pot in. The circuit in the bathroom is overloaded, so I need to bring a line up from the panel up into the bathroom here just to pick up this uh, one light that's going in the shower. So there's my outside bathroom walls, Stevie. So venting, pretty straightforward here. Well, yeah, very straightforward. We've got solid uh, aluminum panels here. We've changed these out to vented panels uh, to get that air from you know the outside area here into that cavity, which is going right. to allow it to breathe up over the, the bathroom wall. Right, because we are going to put a ridge vent up right over the bathroom only, right? Yeah, just, over just the to help us breathe this whole thing. So Alex, before we spray foam this ceiling, I just want to create a void to help exhaust out through the ridge vent. So if you want to vent it, right, the ridge vent would be the proper yeah. way to do it. Run your baffles from the soffits, collect the yeah. air from the soffit, run it up to the top to the ridge vent. Without that proper air circulation in that void, moisture will get caught in there and eventually rot out that roof. OK, let's get the baffles installed, guys. With that taken care of, now we can spray foam. the old skylights, putting some new uh, glass skylights in. This particular unit, the lenses are starting to uh, cloud over. The seals in the skylight itself are starting to wear out. So now is the appropriate time to change them. The advantage here, we don't, get, we don't have to throw this material out. The aluminum and the acrylics are both recyclable. So we're going to take it off to the appropriate place. That's raccoon poop right there. No way. And then we have all kinds of mice, eh? Look at the nest there. Yeah, there's just something gross about mice. <laughs> all of them. Go away. Get in behind there and take a look. And just do it gently in case some critters in there. I love you guys. Now, the home inspector's not going to see this. And that's, that's the issue. He can't see through the wall. Well, when I came in, I went, that's really strange. We have a void there. Right. right. So I start adding 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 2 equals crap in my world. There's problems. But in time I'm done, 
Your bathroom will be the warmest room in the house in the winter. I absolutely guarantee it. We're going right across from that side of the wall to this side of the wall. We are building a wall in front of this wall for only one reason. I have to spray foam my outside plate here. This is enough of a void for spray foam, but it's all about the bottom plate here because if I don't properly insulate that, this is useless. There was a switch by the front entrance that wasn't doing anything. Talking to the homeowner, he ended up finding out ma by making a few phone calls that there used to be a box here for a light fixture. So what I've done is I've actually scanned it with a scanner that picks up metal. And uh, I think I've just found the box right here. Stupid things. They've buried this box that was here because nobody wanted a light. And what they've done is this was live no moret, so this could have been shorting out on the box. We'll put another light here. During my inspection, what I discovered is that the uh, faucet was completely loose. This is what it sounded like before. The only way to actually fix that is to physically get access to it. I had two choices, either get to it from the front, where I had the wall all tiled up, or actually get it from the back. It obviously requires opening up the wall, getting physical access to it, and uh, getting all the plumbing exposed. The actual physical fix is not difficult. All it takes is a few straps, uh, a few copper straps, and uh, just to hold the plumbing in place. But all that headache of getting into it, and uh, something that's so simple, that should have been done in the first place, uh, was omitted and obviously it costs us so much now uh, to, get it, uh, to get it accomplished. Right now we're putting in this 300 CFM fan, replacing the 80 CFM fan that was mounted in the wall. CFM stands for cubic feet a minute. In other words, amount of airflow. Usually fans of a washroom are usually between 50 to 150 CFM. For this size of washroom, you need a pretty big fan. And we're mounting it in the ceiling between the joists, so we're going to run the duct out and through the roof. It's taken a lot of work to get here, but we're finally able to close off the house today. It's amazing how such a small job, like a cold bathroom, can turn into this massive project. So the void between the exterior wall and the bathroom wall was initially designed by the original builder. This would not have been an issue if it was properly insulated and vented. And now there is no sense at all extending the bathroom to the exterior wall when all we have to do is insulate with spray foam. Now we're gonna be using blue wood on the front face of this house. Now that's mold resistant, water resistant, and insect resistant. There is absolutely no way they will be cold in this bathroom this winter. And by closing off the front of the house, it eliminates the animal highway. Now this is the point where we step up the pace. We don't have a lot of time left on this job, but we have a mountain of work left to do. It's always the fine line, being able to work really fast and making sure it's done right. And that's where I'm really happy with the crew I have, because they can do all of those things. They can work under pressure and get the job done. Go. 
throat envy. <laughs> Look at that. That's why I'm covering more square footage. Hey guys, let's prep the cabinets for install, please. Make sure the screws are out. Now, I really wanted to give them the Tudor style back, but instead of replacing it with wood, we wanted to use stucco, which is low maintenance. We started off with the air moisture barrier. We traveled it onto the plywood throughout. Then we applied the styrofoam. We fastened the styrofoam, which is the puck styrofoam that we fastened it with washers. Then we applied the moldings, which you see the brown perimeter is all molding, Tudor style. Then we uh, applied the base coat throughout. And then we're applying the finish coat today. As a contractor, I have to be able to give up some of the glory. The glory, a lot of the time, goes to the finishers, like the painters of the world, uh, the visual stuff that the homeowners can actually see when they walk in the house. We take care of the safety issues, the insulation issues, making them safe and warm. And I am more than happy with that. Bottom line. On a safe, warm, rodent, critter free house. Yeah, nice to see you again. Uh, uh, welcome home. Are you happy to be home? No. Well, these guys, <laughs> these guys are working be. a little hard. <laughs> Cooler? Yes, it is. It's hot outside, cool inside. And we have the air conditioning going, which has made me really mm -hmm. happy. Oh, sure. uh, we can talk. Just look at the outside here. You see this? Doesn't that look like wood? It looks yeah. amazing. It's not wood. It's not. That's all that? foam and stucco. So each, each piece of brown is actually foam. And I love this stuff because it is, what is it? No maintenance. Yeah. Right? You may paint it in 10 years from now. That's about it. And that really just solves all the problems in the front. It looks, looks really good. Really good. Well, you're not going to have worries of critters anymore. You notice we took out the vent, which we want vents, but we have it somewhere else. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what happened with that. Uh, we did do new east drops Absolutely. and downspouts throughout your old house, as well as smart screen. The smart screen is going to help you on many things. You don't have to clean the east drops and downspouts, and it helps stop, reduce any ice damming. I'll show you the garage, and I'll go into more detail. So Damon, you took apart your bench, and it was really not so good. It's not that you built it bad. Did you build it? Yes. Yeah, I had help. OK, you built it great. <laughs> I'm playing with nice you. Nice cover. He thought he'd give you a couple of cabinets, some storage stuff for the shelves, and it cleans it up a little bit more. Wow. But as we look up to the trouble zone, we had everyone crawling in there. We've actually turned that back into an attic space, but you can't see it. Behind that is all the spray foam where we wrapped your bathroom completely and made sure that we stopped any gases coming in from the cars as well as keeping that wonderful cool air in the summer yeah. in your bathroom and vice versa in the winter. Did you find out where the animals were coming in? We searched everywhere, every possible route. We found not only the feces of uh, obviously oh, no. raccoons and chipmunks, chipmunks or squirrels, squirrels. but we, we found. Found a dead one. We found it what? right well, right in the cathedral ceiling of your bathroom. And he had gotten in there, ripped apart your insulation, couldn't get out. No and damage on the electrical, which I'm oh, happy with. Yeah. I'm very happy with that. So. To answer your question, no more critters. <laughs> I'm happy. Well, what surprised us the most was just the amount of work that needed to be done behind the scenes, the amount of damage that the animals had caused, the amount of insulation that needed to be replaced. It's just such a relief to know that it's been done right. Gary came in, and we wanted to make sure you see where your line comes off your humidifier. It actually tied into the trunk and not the plenum. We want to make sure, so they actually disconnected it off the trunk, covered that hole, and brought it into the uh, plenum on the other side. That's exactly, that was a wrong thing the guys did. We corrected that. We also went through and taped up everything, yep. removed that, uh, that metal panel that was here because of the electrical issue, right. put in a, a safer panel. What we don't want is the metal touching the wire. So that's replaced. 
by taping all these joints. If you look around everywhere, what that's going to do is increase airflow to where it's supposed to go throughout the house. You had a little bit of, uh, remember the mold we saw on the floor, Joyce? Yeah. You had the guys get some scrub brush, a little bit of uh, soap and water, elbow not grease. Javax, not any mm -hmm. type of bleach, a little bit of elbow grease, clean it all up. You're still gonna see a little bit of dirt there, but the mold's been removed. And what would cause that? Too much moisture downstairs. Mm -hmm. You need to control that and control that humidistat that's on your humidifier. You need to control it. You don't want too much moisture down here. All yeah. right, let's work our way upstairs. Now, you got a new light. Sherry picked this oh, light, yeah, I was told. Did. Well, actually, I can see that there was some thought put into it because the alabasters are similar color, and she chose a brown. Yeah. It has a woman's touch. Minor electrical things, couple things in the kitchen. He did a couple extra things for us upstairs, as well as working in the garage, and installed all the lights for us. Gotta love these guys. And you're lucky. I mean, one owner before you guys, there was no renovations done here before. It was brought up to minimum code when the house was passed. So, I mean, there wasn't a lot of electrical or plumbing issues. Minor stuff, anyway. Now we're gonna show your bathroom. Wow. Okay, oh, it looks a little different, eh? <laughs> you know you had carpet, which really doesn't work in a bathroom for me. I kind of don't like it. This is a high-end tile. It's polished and finished on the top side. So instead of just doing the floor, which we did a lot of prep work to do the floor to lay this tile, we never want to see it crack. We want to see it last forever. We actually brought it up the wall to make sure that it just mimics the floor and looks good on the wall. They cut these down to size, didn't they? Yeah, we took these tiles and we cut them in quarters and put them up there. I didn't want to put baseboard under the shower or anything. It should be tiled. And what you didn't see was that everything in the ceiling was completely ripped open. Once this is completely opened up, we created a baffle system. So what we want is air to get up in between each and every rafter, spray in front of that. What did we use? Multideco. Ah, we love that. We use a friendly product. Spray foamed everything. We thermal break this side. That is the biggest exhaust fan that we could find to put in here. Let's test it. Turn it on. We want it to run during and after, okay? Always at least 30 minutes after a shower. So we're just gonna put it up on high for a sec. It's Isn't that quiet? quiet? Nice and quiet. Let me tell you something, you put your hair up against that, it's gonna yep. give you a nice little feeling. <laughs> Martin also did some things. We talked about hammering pipes. Yes. Okay, yes. so yeah. we cut in some holes, and we found some very loose pipes at your showers, both here and... The other washroom. The other right washroom. The here. Your shower actually has a good shelf life left on it. So we didn't have to take it out. That's what I was afraid of. We opened it up, everything was fine. All you had to do was really strap it. Caulking the whole shower as well, taking out the old caulking, bring it back to life. And the funny thing is you look at all this and you go, well, geez, they didn't do too much. Just to look, ah, oh, you did some new tiles, you did like green paint. Some of the things you don't see is everything that's underneath it. We've controlled all air movement around your attic, yet thermal broke everything. It's the way I would do my own home, it's the way I'm gonna do yours. So you're not gonna be cold, I absolutely guarantee it. I'm happy you have me. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. My absolute pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you both. You're nice people. Thanks, Stuart, Mike. I like meeting good people. I like <laughs> helping good people. Mike, it was a pleasure. Oh, sorry. Hey, Mike. you guys. <laughs> I'll see you downstairs. I think before, there was a lot of questions in our minds, just seeing the things that the home inspector missed, finding the mistakes and realizing there were these gaps, having Mike and the crew go through the home, find the mistakes that were the most safety-related issues, um, and repair them um, is definitely a load off of our minds, and we can definitely sleep easy knowing that there's no harmful gases, no rodents. Uh, our bathroom is going to be dry and warm. Having Mike and the guys here, is, it's been a blessing. Well, Cheers. 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 We're making it right. Thanks, Just pick that up for me. Yeah. What is that? What is what? Don't touch that. Don't touch me with that. Are you kidding me? OK, the joke's gone bad. Get away oh, from me. Oh, really? OK, here we go. Yeah, <laughs> there we go, man. OK, you ready? Okay. Look at the camera. Thank <laughs> you.